over like four years at this point it's about four years since I started hearing about this guy um, is a golden oldie officially so uh, the ESP8266 in case you're not familiar is a ooh, ooh. oh no come back computer oh where's it gone <laughs> uh, one moment there we go ah, better. okay um the ESP8266, you can look it up on Hackster, you can get all the specs, it's fantastic. Uh, it's a tiny little cheap board, uh, typically seen in the 01 package that you see here, with the little 8 pins at the bottom, and what it is, is uh, it can work as a Wi-Fi access point, so it'll show up in your network list, like when you click on your Wi-Fi uh, icon and you're like, why am I not connecting? Maybe the reason you're not connecting is that someone has set up one of these guys to mimic an access point, even though it can't get you on the actual internet, uh, it can serve you a little page that makes you think that you're on the internet, uh, or that sends you a message when you try to connect to it or whatever. Uh, the ASP can do that, and it can also um, give Wi-Fi access to your projects. So you'll see it uh, included in a lot of other boards. For example, we have here the Adafruit uh, Feather Huzzah. Let me zoom in on that for you, so we're not still in super distant mode. Yeah, uh, so this guy has an ESP8266 on it. It is in the ESP12, uh, the 12 package. Uh, this is a little module that you'll notice looks a little bit different from the one that I showed you on a page a second ago. Um, that one has eight pins at the bottom, and you can solder to it and attach jumper wires and stuff. It may or may not come with the headers attached, uh, but it's super cheap. It's just like a couple dollars. Um, and the other one, this little guy, uh, has uh, castellated edges. That is, the pins are broken out into little uh, these little sort of divots that are then soldered onto a carrier board. And so this is, uh, yeah, again, the Adafruit Feather Huzzah, which has been around for a while. It's one of their earlier feathers. Whoops. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it can connect your projects to the internet. You can program it in Arduino. You can attach a little lithium polymer battery. And you can even get one that has our logo on it. Super cute. Uh, then we also have the Oshwi badge by Gustavo Rinaga, who's super awesome. Uh, and I'll include a link to that, uh, and a, I'll show you that project at the end of this video. Um, this is a Wi-Fi connected board with some RGB LEDs on it, and obviously it's also an octopus! Then we have the Node MCU, which is designed to be programmed in Lua, or you can also use Arduino with it. Uh, I think... yeah. Anyway, so this guy also, you can see the sort of little castellated edges on here. See how it's just sort of like one board that's stuck on top of another one, the little ESP module? sitting on top. There's also a bigger sibling to the ESP8266, <laughs> um, which is a little more beefy, called the ESP32. Alright, so now that we are oriented, I wanted to share some new cool stuff with you. Um, we have uh, a blog, as you might know, and on it we post cool stuff sometimes. <laughs> so this one is uh, submitted by Jeremy Cook. Let me uh, give you a little bit more centering there. Um, no, we'll grab the one in here. Everything's a little, uh, there we go, a little special today, huh? <sighs> Monday. Um, anyway, so yeah, uh, this one is an interesting project by the uh, Moscow artist Dmitry Morozov, uh, VTOL. And we, uh, I've seen some of this artist's previous work, which I'll show you in a second, and it's really fascinating. He plays really interestingly with culture. Uh, and in this case, he's created a little uh, Wi-Fi sort of social engineering device. Uh, it doesn't hack anyone else's Wi-Fi. Like, it create it has three ESP8266s inside of this thing attached to an Arduino Mega, I think. And um, together, they, they can create three SSIDs, which means you have 96 characters in which to write whatever you want in someone's little Wi-Fi drop-down menu. Uh, you know your neighbors who have that prank network called, like, FBI surveillance van or whatever? Please don't investigate me. Um, yeah, you can do that with whatever. Um, and you can create three of them and have them, like, all sort of reference each other or whatever. It's got this amazing little clicky keyboard that makes me want to just grab it and, and touch it with my little fingers. And <laughs> uh, also, um, it can things like 
generate a welcome page, like I mentioned, if you create a captive portal um, access network, uh, you can have it like request that someone sign in and like pop up a little thing that says, hey, what are you doing on this network? Or like, hey, you just joined this network without you know, knowing what it was. Or hey, you thought you were joining your office's network uh, hackster things, but you're actually joining my fake network hackster things and now I can like fish you for whatever. Um, be careful, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yeah, so you can create a uh, welcome page, you can like share files and stuff over this, super cool. And I really love uh, the idea that it can be used as an anonymous chat device as well. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I have heard of cases though of people setting up a, a network actually called FBI surveillance van and getting hella arrested for it. So your mileage may vary. Be careful, we're not endorsing this behavior. In fact, I'm telling you to watch out for people perpetuating this behavior, but it's still a really cool thing. Uh, VTOL has their own hack uh, write-up online. I wanted to show you a couple of their previous projects because at Ars Electronica last year, uh, I ran across this thing, which is, um, this is a synthesizer that is made with vials of the artist's diluted blood. <laughs> uh, again, interesting cultural commentary. There's this tangle of like, I think this is, I forget what kind of board this is down here. Uh, it was something pretty unusual. And they've got it creating music based on the conductivity of the contents of these jars. Don't worry, it's not all blood. It's like diluted and stuff. This is a weird M MCU Monday, by the way. You thought you were just gonna hear about Wi-Fi, you're hearing about weird biohacking art and stuff. If you want to see more weird biohacking art, go check out our Ars Electronica coverage from last year. All right, <laughs> on to more, uh, I guess, less super weird things. This is also weird, but it's really, really cool. Okay, so I had a, a device a while ago. I, oh yeah, the electric imp used to work this way, I think. You would uh, put your phone... Uh, send it to a particular web page and it would flash information at, I think it was the electric imp. Uh, I gotta check on that and, and link it to you if so, because if so, that's just, it's been around for like at least five years. Um, yeah, and it basically sends information as bits of uh, encoded in flashing lights. And we saw this recently as well in uh, my tutorial about the optics by and sending uh, reading and coded messages that are sent by blinking a couple LEDs on this Tomu device. Uh, it's an idea that is clearly gaining popularity. Um, there's the concept of Li-Fi, which is just transmitting information like this um, in incredibly fast flashes of light. This one doesn't flash super fast, but basically allows you to set your ESP8266 credentials uh, you know, your SSID or network name and the password, if so, uh, by just resting this device on the screen of your phone. I love it! Or even your laptop. I mean, I've pulled up the page here and we can just say, like, you can put some instructions here if you want. Um, obviously, you would be doing this on your phone, but, like, network. Pirates. I guess it's pirate day. I don't know. So you would put your ESP266 with a circuit of a photoresistor, so it's just a light sensor, um, at the end of this little thingy, and uh, stick that onto your screen, just let it sit there, and then you would hit transfer, and it just blinks. How cool is that? <laughs> They've got a progress bar on the top and the bottom, really great, surprisingly awesome uh, user interface for this, like, <laughs> uh, how long can we just watch a blinking screen and have you not leave the video, huh? Uh, this is another iteration of it that uses the photoresistor inside of a tiny little cap thing so you can just put it on a stick. Uh, this is so cool! I love this project! Oh, it's so, so clever! Uh, I don't know, there's something about just like doing wireless stuff with light, I think, that, that bears a lot more explanation or exploration. But finally, uh, another thing to watch out for when you're doing Wi-Fi, I found this story on Twitter. Uh, my friend Claire linked it, actually. And uh, so, 
we need to talk about the word, I'm not sure if I'm going to say this right, idempotent, idempotent. Um, so that means basically that when you send an HTTP GET request to a server, it should respond the same way or have the same effect, whether or not, like regardless of the activity that goes on around it. Uh, in this case, uh, you're able to, uh, so this guy has a uh, garage door controller that works on Wi-Fi, and you can go to the link for the controller on your phone, and the link is called Toggle. So by calling this web page with a GET request, um, he was able to toggle the door up or down. The problem with that versus uh, this idea of being idempotent, idempotent, <laughs> I should look, <laughs> look that up first, uh, is that if you're toggling something, you're basically taking the state that it was before and turning it into the reverse of that. So it's not going to do the same thing every time. That's the opposite of the point of toggling something. Uh, and so, uh, rather than like having, so he, he used this page often enough that it saved itself as a bookmark in Safari <laughs> uh, as one of his favorites, which meant that it would try and load a preview of it, I assume, every time he went to Safari and opened a new tab on any of his devices. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so bad, <laughs> and so, you know, if it had just been like the closed garage door page, that would have been fine and great. But since it was the toggle command, uh, then any time he opened a new tab in Safari, the door would go up or down, and it depended on like whatever it had done last, and that's just so bad! It's so bad! <laughs> anyway. I thought this was hilarious, and it has hella upvotes for very good reason. Just things to consider when you're deciding whether to have two separate pages for on and off, or sometimes, like with the ESP8266, you'll be able to call a specific page that the ESP serves uh, with a slash zero or a slash one, and that'll let you like set a pin low or high. Uh, that's a pretty common way of controlling stuff, and the fact that you have a 0 or a 1 in the URL is very good because it means that you can have a little bit more control rather than just saying, like, whatever you were doing a minute ago, I don't know what it was, but just do the opposite of that, which is not a very good management strategy, and it's also hella bad for your garage door. Oh boy. Uh, yeah. So, to, to quickly review, this, we're talking about the ESP8266, it's fantastic, it's been around for a while, um, but there's some new cool stuff, follow us on Medium and you'll see some cool things. Uh, you can use this hot ninja device from VTOL to communicate uh, anonymously over Wi-Fi, but they can still find you if you, if you do stupid things. Um, you can use a uh, flashing screen to set your ESP8266 screen, uh, or Wi-Fi credentials. This one's by Eduardo Zola. Super cool. And it's got this cool, like, printable case, which you can find at the bottom, uh, or I think in the GitHub repo that's linked from here. And we have this ridiculous story from Will Pierce. I wanted to also show you the page for Ashwi. Uh, this is that octopus I was talking to you about. If you've forgotten in the last few minutes, you have a terrible memory. Because this thing is super cool and weird. <laughs> uh, and I have a video of putting it together. I hope to have an actual demo up soon. But thanks, Gustavo, for making that. Thank you all for watching. Uh, I want to show you, just because I'm really excited about these, I want to show you again. We've got the uh, Adafruit Feather Huzzah with the ESP8266 on it. And it's the ESP12 module. Uh, that has the little castellated edges. I really love that word. That's why I keep saying it. <laughs> um, and uh, the Node MCU board, which I made into a little like uh, motion detector a while ago. And finally, we have the uh, Oshui board by Gustavo Reynaga. So cool! Thanks for watching. I need to be gentler with these things. And have an awesome rest of your MCU Monday. Ciao.